Hello, everyone. This is Akata Vesta. Thank you for joining me. Today, we are going to talk about a very particular planetary movement. We can call it a grand cross. In particular, this is a grand multiple cross with four particular points. We have Saturn and Pisces, Moon in Sagittarius, Venus in Virgo, and Jupiter and Mars in Gemini. And with that, we are go also going to connect the Moon with the great attractor in galactic astrology to see how this grand cross together with the squares influencing us, giving us this particular um, nuance that preparing us into the Aquarius full moon. So in this video, I'm not going to talk about the Aquarius full moon because even then we will have another grand cross, which is a fixed sign cross. It would be just too much, too overwhelmed of energy. As you know, I usually don't like to talk about the transi transiting planet that much unless I see there is some particular influence, even in the longer term. And I think this multiple grand cross has Color significance that preparing us into the later stage, the year, and in particular, as I said before, with Aquarius Moon in the 19th of August. So now this grand force is happened on the 14th or the 15th August. So if we look at the chart that with this multiple grand cross as a general term i think in these four positions we are talking about the integration and each of us are being part of a greater whole that each of us has specific role in our society in our mass consciousness. It is also about multitasking with Jupiter and Mars in Gemini and how we are going to integrate that energy and one at a time to see how all of this interconnected between the cross and the square. I think first of all, it is telling us how we, as people, as person, we can work and cooperate with each other through a better global understanding and also with Saturn in retrograde, how we can bring out the unnecessary noise false information, how we can understand life in a better way and and now how we can navigate within our current social, political circumstances. With Gemini, we have Jupiter and Mars opposing the moon in Sagittarius. I think that is talking about our mind of our consciousness, where we can expand and how we are going to bring out this expansion also connecting it with our emotional self 
with the moon in Sagittarius. While Jupiter and Mars tend to be overly excited with millions of ideas, we can be here, we can be there, we can do this and we can do that, but they are squaring Saturn in retrograde, in Pisces. So there is this a point of holding back, of not act as fast as we want it, to be more considerate, to look back with Saturn in Pisces while our mind with Neptune has been in Pisces for so long that we are going through our spiritual evolvement. But Saturn now is, is retrograding, squaring Jupiter and Mars, helping us to slow down, to think before we act, to think before we speak. And Saturn is opposing Venus in Virgo. Venus in Virgo while tapping into our lo logical capacity through also the expansion of Venus, Venus squaring Jupiter, the higher mind of Venus. Also there is telling us how much we should get on moving with this position of squaring. We should put in more consideration before we act and taping into our emotion with moon in Sagittarius. Even though in Sagittarius we are talking about creativities, expansion once again, squaring Saturn. I think in this grand cross, somehow Saturn as a father figure, as a mentor, as someone that is wise and stable, is holding everyone. The moon in Sagittarius, Venus in Virgo, and Jupiter and Mars in Gemini to hold everyone a step back before we act. Is it the moment whenever we have new idea, we should immediately start acting on it and speaking our mind without much consideration or we should hold on a little bit. And together as a whole, this mutable grand cross is teaching us for us to learn in a better way what we can do about our ideology with moon in Sagittarius. What battle would we take on? Is there too much information surrounding us, giving us too much of this fiery energy with Jupiter and Mars in Gemini? how we can discern what is being given, what are the messages behind what is being shared publicly through media, political situations. Because we are talking about mutable. It is actually 
giving this energy of flow without too fixate into certain situation, certain topic. I don't like to talk about politics, you know, but as now in America, we are in this full cycle of political movement into the election in November. One day we see one le leader, one candidate. The next day there may be a change. Things is not fixed. It's not settled down yet. There are going to be much changes through the way. And this mutable Grand Cross is helping us to not let us too much involved to succeed into certain candidate today we might agree with one tomorrow we might not agree any longer instead of attacking other for differences maybe we should all a little bit calm down to discern much better, to look in a deeper level, to wait further down the road to see what will be revealed later on in this political stage. And because Jupiter and Mars, they are this very fiery energy it's like adventures if they are bold and fearless. But Saturn is trying to hold back, trying to invite us not too fast. Stay, watch, observe. And exactly this square bringing us a teacher, a kind of wisdom, a role model that if we look back the history, everything that is being shown not necessarily the truth, the truth. Most often than not being hidden behind the scene we still can't see it yet. Saturn in retrograde, in Pisces, in this fogginess, this veiling in the ocean, there is much to be revealed, to be shown, and to find out behind the scene what is really going on. Mutable, flow with it, collect, or the information that we need. Venus, Virgo, be analytic, discernment, collecting information, put it into your pocket, leave it there, don't act, don't upset too much of our emotion, don't get involved too much. Our emotion, moon in such a terrace. And there is a lot of cautions in today's planetary movement. How do we detach what is being shared is false or truth. Before we speak up against the opposition, before these oppositions and squares, we should try to think better. Words have consequences. Jupiter and Mars, we might let things out, 
without thinking it twice, but words as vibrations, words can hurt, or on the other hand, can assist. How are we going to share our words, our thoughts, our emotion, the information that we have we have been collecting? All these, we need to be more flexible as all these mutable signs in this grand course. Especially now if we are looking at the moon in Sagittarius at 14 degrees, it is connected with the great attractor in our galactic system while the galactic center reflects our consciousness of the old wounds, old trauma that in this lifetime we come to heal. In the bigger old tapes, we have the supergalactic center, which is like a black hole, has its very great potential of attracting, pulling in people's attentions, like a black hole, as we understand it, that stuck in all planets, constellation around it. Everything's around it. Get draw into it. And people with a galactic center usually represent someone has certain frequency, vibrations that draw in attentions, draw in people, leader of their own sort. And about that, we have great expected that even higher in our consciousness into Sagittarius, our creative mind, the development of our consciousness. And in particular, if you look at that toric field, of this pulling in and spitting it out. This regeneration energy is a form of transformation for us to develop, integrate, transmute and hence transcend into a, something new and exactly that also represents auric feel of our body like a tree that regeneration of energies and i think that is exactly reflecting the kind of situation, circumstances that we are in today, that we should let this energy going in and out, in and out, with certain easiness, with certain grace. If we too fixate and we try to go strongly or against, we disturbed, we disturbed this flow, this universal flow energies, this vibration and helping us to, to grow in our consciousness and each of us as a singular, we are participating as a whole in this mutable energy that we reflect back to each other. Doesn't really matter today if you are not agree with certain party 
draw in whatever you have, integrate it, transmute it, regenerate it in later stage. And we are all here today as a whole, as, as mass consciousness, as divine consciousness to share, to break the old belief systems. While some of us, many of us, still following the old paradigm on participation into the social political systems. I think also this mutable force is inviting us to look back to sit back, to withdraw a little bit from the front row, to retreat, and so that we can discern much better for later stage. And in just less than five days, on the 19th of August, we are going to have Aquarius, full moon, with another grand cross, which is a fixed sign cross. It's even more difficult to, to work between this, this, the, the energy then. So this mutable grand cross is like a foreplay of helping us to understand all this interconnectedness, all this intersection between houses and planets and energy and vibration to bring out the best of us to flow with the divine energies. Remember the terrific view that energy of regeneration never stops. And I shall see you in a few days when I talk about the Aquarius full moon. I invite you to have a look in your chart. Do you have any particular point of the 17 degrees in Sagittarius, in Virgo, in Gemini, and in Pisces? If you have that, you are being activated particularly through this grand cross and would like a consultation with me, please visit my website, Becoming Lotus of Rock. I see you in a few days. Thank you.